your eligibility for short and long-term disability benefits and osteoporosis. My dad purchased a disability insurance policy to protect his family in the event he became disabled and to provide us with financial security. Unfortunately, he did become disabled and he had to apply for those benefits. But these days, disability insurance companies don't make it easy for those with osteoporosis or other medical conditions to get the disability benefits they deserve. More than 52 million Americans suffer from osteoporosis. It changes the mass and density of your bones. And this disorder can cause your bones to honeycomb. These holes and spaces in turn make your bone porous. As a result, you can easily break a vertebral body in your spine, break your hip, your ankle, your arm, or your wrists. It's not uncommon uh, for osteoporosis of the spine to cause that vertebrae to break or collapse. That can result in what's called wedging or a compression fracture. The pain can be awful. The wedging can make it difficult for you to sit, lift, and stoop. But disability carriers don't understand that. And I find that they're denying not only more initial disability claims than ever, but they're denying osteoporosis claims that they accepted. And that's particularly true when the definition of disability changes. That's why you've made the wise decision to watch this series of uh, film about disability benefits. Look, I know that bone pain associated with osteoporosis and wedging are common reasons for filing a claim. I hope you enjoy this series and learn more about the evaluation process used by disability carriers in every osteoporosis claim.